you know, I didn't know what the topic for this week's video was even going to be, but then it hit me. But it does require a little bit of context. So here's the context. I'm on a certain creative Discord server. I'm not gonna name which server it is exactly, and I'm not gonna name any names for this instance. You'll see why. So I was on this server, and in this server there's a channel for creative discussions. The creative discussions in question are usually questions that the host of the server will post and then all other members of the server who are not hosts can reply to the question to keep the discussion going, basically. The question that was posted recently, I'm going to do a paraphrase of it because if I read you the exact quote, that might give away a few things. And I also just want to hedge my bets just in case the people who are on that server are watching this video. But basically the question was asking, how would you handle or even push gender and sexuality within certain narratives? How would you adjust the world building or the plot for that? Would you focus the story on that particular gender or sexuality or would you focus it on the character who happens to be that sexuality? And, you know, this is a fair question to ask, considering that there are a lot of straight authors who make a lot of hay about, oh gosh, do I put gay characters in my narrative? And as a genderqueer author and creator, I'm like, man, I really want to make a story about a genderqueer character, so how about I do that? So that's how I made The Legend of Jamie Roberts. When I answered the question on the Discord server, I did talk about my webcomic, but in the vein of, here's how I did it in my comic. However, within a couple of hours of my posting that, there was another post from the Discord server host that was like, Hey, this is the Creative Discussion Channel. We've kindly asked that you don't do any self-promotion here. And I was like, well, that's a hell of a subtweet if I ever saw one. So that's why this video is happening. I am going to answer that creative question and I'm going to make it everyone else's problem. So here's how I'm going to answer that question. That question of what would you do with the conventions of gender and sexuality within, say, the fantasy genre? Because that's what The Legend of Jamie Roberts is. It's a fantasy adventure story. It also has a genderqueer protagonist. Reason one being, this was a story that I really wanted to read as a teenager, and it did not exist when I was a teenager, so I was like, fuck it. I'm going to make this story for other teens and young adults who would love this kind of stuff who were like me and didn't have the language for all these feelings, basically. Or even understanding what being genderqueer even meant. Because when I was a teenager, there was no language for that stuff. I'm trying to tone down my swearing as much as possible and it's... I might as well just swear. YouTube's gonna demonetize me for talking about genderqueer stuff. I might as well swear. So the thing about The Legend of Jamie Roberts is, yes, the main character is genderqueer and it is part of the plot but in a different sort of way. It's not tokenizing to the straights to be like, see, these people need to be respected too. It's more, here's the context for the legend of Jamie Roberts. So Jamie and friends find an unfinished treasure map during one of their pirate raids, and they decide to retire from the high seas and go exploring in this unknown land that they've never been to before to fill out this map and find treasure for themselves. That's the story. That's how it starts. However, it's established in chapter one that Jamie is pretty weebly wobbly with gender identity. Like, yeah, the captain refers to them as one of the boys, and Jamie's like, ah, finally! I'm glad that the captain is seeing that I'm not always a girl, but also I'm not always a boy. But they also come from a culture where there is no language for that sort of thing. This new land that they are going to not only has dragons and evil shadow creatures called Mokta, it also has a role in society called the Dwenda. And the Dwenda is the person who is neither male nor female, neither man nor woman, but is both and neither at the same time. And they play a role in this society. They can, at will, walk between worlds because there are two worlds within this narrative. There's the physical world that all the characters are interacting in, and then there's a spirit world called The Way. And this actually does tie into the plot because there is an evil dragon that is locked away in The Way, and it is very important that he stay locked away. However, Jamie, being a Dwenda, aka a person who is both 
male and female, but also neither, has this ability to walk into this other plane of existence and interact with said evil dragon that has been locked away. That's all I can say without going into spoilers for chapters eight and beyond. There's a whole lot that happens afterwards. This is the setup of the story. And I explicitly built this story like this because I not only wanted the genderqueer protagonist, I wanted to have a society that would have that language. And I wanted to have the society be structured in such a way that there was a role for genderqueer people. Those people who are neither male nor woman, both and neither. Either. Now, do I lean into the magical gaze trope a little bit? Yes. Do I also root this a bit in a lot of the research in African and Native American studies? Yes. Now, I'm not an expert in African and Native American studies. Please, dear God, do not quote me like I am an expert in either one. They were just minor focuses of mine when I was in college at the time. I have a degree in two-dimensional arts. Please do not quote me like I'm some kind of expert. <laughs> I just have a very keen interest in this. I've done some field research with, within Navajo Nation. In fact, a lot of Navajo Nation makes it into The Legend of Jamie Roberts. But... Point being, in the research that I've done for African and Native American studies, there is a running theme of gender group people not only being like accepted in a lot of these societies, but also having a very important cultural role in being peacekeepers between the physical world and the spirit world. And I wanted to incorporate that into this world of the legend of Jamie Roberts. It is part of the plot because what happens is Jamie does something that they should not have, but they did it because they were not told the full story. And now they have to be initiated into this society where there is language for genderqueer identity, for their understanding of their place within this society. And they have to use that understanding to correct the mistake and get balance back in the world. That balance back in the world is not, oh, you have to assign yourself into the male or the female box. The role that Jamie has to take up is, oh, I am a duenda. I have to be the peacekeeper between the physical world and the way. I made a mistake that threw off that balance. I have to correct it. Now, obviously they're not doing it alone, but that is why I made this narrative the way that it is. That is the answer to the question <laughs> regarding how would I push the conventions of gender and sexuality in fantasy? This is how I would do it. And this is how I am currently doing it because the legend of Jamie Roberts is still going. This is the shameless plug part of the podcast. I'm not apologizing for it. I will gush about this comic as often as I can get away with <laughs> because I love making this story. Again, it's the story that I wish that I had when I was 13 or 14. So I'm sharing this and making it everyone else's problem. <laughs> Everybody has been really loving the story so far, and that makes me really happy. It updates every Wednesday with a new page, so you can read that at thelegendofjamieroberts.com. We're already partway into chapter 10, and the archive is newly updated, so now's a really good time to catch up on the story. I will say, uh, just on the production side of things, I actually do something that I don't see a lot of other webcomic artists do, which is whenever a chapter wraps, I take a short hiatus between chapters chapters. So we're not towards the end of chapter 10 yet, but when chapter 10 ends, I'm going to be taking a two week break. And then after that two week break, I'm going to start up chapter 11. I've not seen a ton of other comic artists do this online. By all means, if you're a webcomic creator and you do that, let me know in the comments. But I really like doing this practice. It's actually helped a lot with I don't want to say avoiding burnout because it's really cliche and it doesn't really apply, but it has helped with pacing myself. It's also really nice to have that moment of suspense for the readers to be like, oh gosh, what's going to happen next? <laughs> I really enjoy doing that to my readers, I'm not gonna lie. Thank you so much for watching. This page of The Legend of Jamie Roberts has already been published for quite a few months now because this is from chapter nine. If you would like to get early access to webcomic updates, I hope you consider becoming a member on Ko-fi. You can go to ko-fi.com slash Kelsey D. Crawford and you can sign up through my newly renovated club memberships. This includes the digital club at $3 a month, and there are also $5 and $10 tiers. 
So if you would like to check that out, get early webcomic updates and get a ton of other rewards, head over to ko-fi.com slash Kelsey D. Crawford. The link is also down in the description. All these names that you're seeing on the screen right now are fellow Kofi members. Shout out to everybody who helps make these pages and these videos possible. Thank you so much for watching. You are awesome.